Okay, here we go. There's five more since I turned this on. People like this, G. It really he said it's help. helpful. It really does help people. It really does. Just that little message. I mean, um, the one message I gave to the one girl, Jamie, if you get that feeling even once a year, then it's all worth it. She bawled and bawled and bawled. Like she goes, she grabbed my arm and she goes, these are tears of joy. And I go, okay, okay. And you know what I mean? But I know how you can get wrecked. So I want to pass that on to you. That if, if that happens every now and again, it's all worth it. Because I was like, I felt so like amazing that I really helped somebody like move on with their life or get a yes. little bit of closure, you know? Okay, here we go, Gigi. Oh boy, it's growing. Okay. First of all, Jessie Daniel says she loves you and she misses you. And I love to start off with that because I know how you eat that up. And she's like a little sister to you. Okay. So, okay. Chris does love that. Okay. So, um, Dina Odison says, please send my love to Griff and my son, Chris Thomas Memorial. We've talked to him before. So send um, love from Dina, his mama. Done. Okay, okay Chris O'Mara. Uh, she was married to my cousin. I doubt he has seen my mom. I miss her. Patricia, Patricia Lee Anthony O'Mara. How is she? So we're focusing on Patricia? Yes. Patricia Lee Anthony O'Mara. How is she? And I'll broaden the question. Is she in peace? <laughs> oh. Griffin's talking, and he says, um, he goes, I will tell you she's crossed over, and he goes, but Patricia's not the kind of girl, girl, she's a woman, uh -huh. who likes to be at peace. Okay. She kind of likes to have a little rowdy okay. and a little chaos to kind okay. of. I could see so that. So she is kind of mingling with the people who are still living and getting into what their chaos is and helping resolve it. Okay. So it's giving her purpose. Okay. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily peaceful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got any message for her daughter? Griffin says, um, tell her not to worry whenever there is anything going wrong in her life that, um, uh, Patricia's going to do her best to fix it. Okay. He said, so if she doesn't want her doing that, then she better correct her life in the now as it's happening and not wait. Okay, so mama's meddling. <laughs> hint, 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 okay. hint, hint. Got you, got you. Okay, Yvette, Yvette I'm not real good with pronunciation, so Yvette Jennifer Moore. Uh, Marshawn, my sister Shelly was murdered in 2006. Any message from her would be appreciated. And she didn't give me a last name, so are we going to be able to do this or not? So it'd be a vet sister. A vet, Jennifer Moore. Her sister Shelley was murdered in two thousand six. Any message from her would be appreciated. So focusing on sister Shelley. Oh, all right. Thanks. Um, Griff has her, two thumbs up. She's very calm, very well protected. And um, there is still a need to heal around her death. Okay. Like that's still um, wide open, Not, nothing is, nothing, sorry. It is not all 100% resolved, so Shelly will sometimes go and put efforts towards um, balancing the scale, but her forgiveness, all of that is done. She's like beautiful, bright, Aww. and has been uh, dropping a lot of hints to her sister Yvette about changing locations. Okay. Um, 
I don't know if that's moving a business or moving personal, but it's definitely about changing locations. So from wherever she is, and she's going to keep pointing the direction, showing the way, signs, symbols, words, pops up on the computer. Okay. She's a pretty consistent sister. That's wow. a nice one to have. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. So she just got to be open to these messages. Mm -hmm. And her sister sounds like she's already healed and she forgives, but mm -hmm. the family's still open. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, we're slow down here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll get that to her. Okay, Beth Lazenby Mason. Tell my daddy and Allie I love and miss them every day. Pat Lazenby would be the dad and Allie Davenport. How are they and can you tell them that she misses them every day? <laughs> Griffin said, no need. She does that for herself. Okay. Um, they hear her, especially the dad. Okay. Allie seems very close, almost like uh, guiding mm. um, her. You know, parents, there's certain guides that kind of come and they kind of go. Absolutely. Like, Griffin, you hang out with your mom in the household, like, all the time. So you're like a permanent fixture in a way. <laughs> like, her dad feels like it's a come and go. But when you mention Allie, I feel like she's there all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and helping. They understand they miss her. Miss. They understand she misses them. Okay. The father's suggestion was to go and get some photos and to do an art project with the photos, make copies. Okay. Um, but apparently the, um, you know, he's not a real big photographer or anything, uh -huh. but um, he has pictures in his collections that don't have anybody in them. They're just like landscape or something. Okay. Plants, bushes. I don't really know what it is. Right. <laughs> But then she could do the art project with those, and okay. just knowing where they came from will send her a special connection. Okay, I love that. That's so sweet. Thank you. Okay, Marie Tello. I would love to know if my dad is at peace. Alex Romero. Um... Do you know this guy, Alex? I do not. Oh, I wish he did. I believe he took his own life, but I'm not for sure. I thought I yes. saw that earlier. Now I don't see it. Okay. He is a character and a half. Okay. Love that. <laughs> we love characters here. <laughs> oh, I think you and, and him would get along just smashingly well. I love that. Sarcastic and silly and big and full of life, and that's exactly how he is now. Aw. She's and it's because. That. Yeah, it's because. Griff is showing me that he was able to get out of the life he had. It was really um, suffocating him. Okay. There was no way for him to heal it or mend it. And okay. so he took his exit and doing very well with it. Okay. If who, Who's the one who sent that? Marie Tello. Marie. It's his daughter. If you were to ever want to take like a meditation class, a spiritual class, or just kind of crack open the door just a little, your dad would totally do the rest for you. That's what kind of character he is. Oh, wow. So she'd so, be able to have free communication with him. Yes. I yeah, it'd be that. really great. So if you want to just sit and ask questions, that's a wonderful place to be in as well. But if you were to approach it just a little, dad would open the door much bigger. So he's a strong spirit, strong communicator. It's his character. Right? I love that. I love that. And I'm glad he's at peace. I'm very glad he's at peace. Yes. Okay, Loretta D. Lustro. Um, a mama lost her baby. We know all about this, Gigi. Hits close to home, if you know what I mean. John Travis, is he at peace, her son? Loretta D. Lustro is his mama, John Travis. Yep. Got him. Any message for your mama, baby boy? A lot. Um, she works hard. She got everybody to, she brought awareness to carrying Narcan for overdose and stuff. 
You worked hard in your memory, kiddo. I hope you see that. Big time. Okay. He's a more of a, a quiet and direct voice. Okay. You know, he's not like, hey, check me out. Look right. at me. I'm here. I made it. It's like, like how you put your head down. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I have some things to say. Okay, go um, for it. He is quite busy mom helping other kids. Um, very similar to what Griff is doing. Okay. But um, it's more of getting kids not to... Also, what do I call that? Relapse? The kids who have quit and have been sober and then want to go to do it again. That's his focus. Relapse. Relapse. And he's thanking his mom for staying in touch, for keeping his memory going. He says it's not necessary as much as she does it, but she does it for herself. Right. And he says, I'm not going to complain about that. Right. Um, there's some kind of lemon citrus kind of a smell with him. Okay. It's a very clean, crisp. I want to say it's a cleaner, but I don't know. So what about the smell? When she smells that, think of you, or is that your sign that you're there? Or? Mm. He's there when that happens. Okay. Anything else, love? No, he's talking to Griffin, and they're talking something about triangles and making a team and getting together. Okay. Okay, Jamie McGinnis Marrera. Sorry for my southern accent, guys. I hope I got that right. I would love to know if my father's death really happened the way it did, or was it a cover-up, cover up, and if he looks over me. Jamie McGinnis Marrera. Are we going to be able to ask this since she didn't leave her dad's name? We'll just hook on to her energy. Okay. Um, so... The father is watching over her. The father is aware. He's transitioned. He can see her. He communicates. He's there in spirit. The details of his death did not play out how they were reported. There was cover-up. There was lying. Um, it was done to protect two other gentlemen that were in the vicinity or involved. Um, But even as I'm saying that, Jimmy, it's not in like an absolute, like a murder case or something like that. It is a, like a default, but the, it wasn't owned. It was written off. And there was another story behind it as well of why it was written off. Okay. Not just to protect the personalities of other people, but there's a, a story that goes with it. Okay, I would imagine she would know about that, right? Or now she does. Maybe by now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, well, um, I'll let her know you watch over her, and I'll give the message. Okay, Tiffany Arbuckle. She just had twins. I know that. Good morning, Marshawn. I'd love to see how my nana, Monica, is and if she sees my boys. My twin boys, Tiffany Arbuckle, or Nana Monica. <laughs> Tiffany, you have to do a lot of work to get your Nana away from the boys. Okay, good. So that took me a little while to fish her down. But then um, she says with the boys, they're doing wonderful. That there is some kind of, um, with, um, ha, huh, smaller one with the smaller one there is a raspy lung um you want to make sure there's proper breathing okay and that it doesn't grow into an asthma or an infection okay i don't see any choking issues or anything that will put him in harm's way it is more of a uh, a rasp, a tickle, and it'll be a cough, but I don't feel like it's a pneumonia thing, but there's fluid in there. The lungs aren't strengthened. And Nana says that this will happen uh, throughout his life. So if you want to give exercises for breathing to him, that will strengthen it and it will be better. Okay. I'll get the other you. boy, just wonderful. Aww. You made some very good babies. 
they're beautiful online. I've not met them, but they look beautiful. Oh, they look beautiful. Okay. Do you get to see them? Did she send a picture? She did. How do you know that? Well, you said they look beautiful online. Where oh, are they? Oh, no, I flipped it. She sent a picture of her nana. Oh, yeah, but she all has right. pictures all over Facebook. Okay, so oh. um, Griffin Brooke Held that you grew up with said she misses you so much, and I wanted to tell you that. Oh, he says thank you. She's tell him I tell her I said hi. Okay, I will do. Okay, Brandy Tear Glass. My dad passed away in November last year at 60, less than three months after we found out he had cancer. I guess I've been the strong one, or at least have pretended well. My sister can't move on. She has sunk into depression and cries daily and replays the events over and over and over. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> he has shown himself to her smiling, healthy, and 30 years old, but she still can't move on. We don't know how to help her. His name is Gary Gilstrap. Oh, that's a cool name. That Gary Gilstrap. I may be way down the list on people who want you to ask about their loved ones, but when you get a chance, can you ask about him, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to read that part. Okay, so <laughs> I was like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> so Gary Gilstrap passed away. And yeah, he's here. And Randy Tear Glass. And you don't even have like to call on him. He just shows up. He's okay, here. Okay, good, good. He's doing great. Um, so, Brandy, for your sister who is having such a hard time, uh, it's only because she felt like she could have done something to save him, to better him. She's taking on the responsibility. Uh, the father, your dad, acknowledges that, and he says, we all know it's not her fault that I am where I am. He said it was a very aggressive cancer. He goes, but also think about your sister. She doesn't know how to say goodbye. She never really knew how to say goodbye before this. And now this is her first real life family, uh, family death. And he says, she can't reconjure that moment to say a proper goodbye. He says, anytime there is some uh, holiday celebration, a reason for gathering, he says, bring my name up, pull my pictures out, and he says, talk about me as if I'm with you, because I am. And this will help her see that there is no need to think of death as being absolute, but rather that my transition away from a body has allowed me to still stay present with you in spirit. Um, I love it. He's got very strong man hands, and he uh -huh. kind of talks with a little bit of a hand gesture like this. I love that. He's very present. That's crazy. I like it. Yeah. I had to work on that hard what he's advising his daughter. Um, it's a different relationship and it can continue if you choose to continue. And I think what we fail to realize when we're here that we're all headed that way. We're all going home and we'll all be together again. You know? Yes. And, and it doesn't make it any less sad because we're saying goodbye to this lifetime physically, you know. So I get where his daughter's at, but she can continue to have a relationship with him if she chooses. Dad says that he is going to choose for her and okay. that there will be a relationship. Good, good. Well, I'll get that message and hopefully that helps them. Okay, so... Griffin, Michael Richmond that you grew up with playing football, his mom, Karen Clem, um, emailed me and said, Anton, oh boy, good luck with this one, Anton Romanovsky overdosed. He was doing really great, that relapse thing you're talking about. I think he was even helping kids in a rehab hospital or something, but he was doing great and he relapsed. And he died uh, last week. And her son, Michael, that you grew up with, Richmond, is having a really hard time with it. So she wants Antoine to know that they love her, love him and miss him. They love and miss you. And how is Anton Romanovsky? I think you got it that last time. Huh? I think you got it that I last did. time. R-O-M-A-N-O-V-S-K-Y, Anton. How is our young man doing? Has he crossed over? It sounds really fresh. Yeah, he crossed really, really over. Fresh. He got jerked over. Okay. Is that a nice way of saying that? Now when they said it out loud, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> He 
He's a kid, um, I believe. Yeah, because he was having such a hard time with the overdose. Um, his spirit, his spirit council, really, if you want to call it that, took him from his body before his body physically died. Um, that was not a pretty passing. You know, anybody who was observing it or around it. I'm sorry, I mean, Grandpa. It's going to sit with you as a lifetime, but please know that Anton didn't go through everything that was being documented. He doesn't have a memory of it. Okay. Um, he has a large amount of guilt that he's trying to manage right now. And once he is able to put that guilt down, you're going to put the guilt down. He doesn't know yet. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's learning. But he's going to then be able to work on his friends. He considers your son as a brother. So if that shows you how close they really were. Mm -hmm. um, I guess he's by struggling, no means, Anton. Yeah, he says, by no means did I want anybody to hurt from the choices that I made. He really didn't believe that it would um, kill him. He'd been told several times if he ever went back to it, it most likely would. But he had seen so many other people do it that, that he wasn't going to be a statistic. And of course, that's what ended up happening. He wants to tell Michael that um, his life is, is not going to be like his. OK that Michael is going to move away and find himself. There's a lot of changes happening with him. It does revolve some around education still. Okay. Um, but then I see him in a like university or an institution like that where it's all based on knowledge, education. It's very, um, I wish I had the word for it, like buttoned up or scientific or um, it's neat. <laughs> he keeps showing it to me, but I can't tell you where it is on a map. Okay. As long as he's but moving forward and living his life while he's here, right? He'll move forward and use it as a motivator to better Good. his life. Good. But he says to uh, Michael's mom is to give him some space. Yeah, she he's going to be okay. She expressed that. She worries, but that's what us moms do. I can tell her not to, but she'll do what she's going to do. Yeah. Hey, that's I understand a, that. That's a good message, and boy, you're communicating quick, because I understand this is really, really fresh. So, um, good luck to you. I'm putting that guilt down, and I'll get the message. And um, all my love to you. Godspeed. And then... Um, Griffin, Alex Sharif, Spider, relapsed. Is he there? Also known as Spider, Alex Sharif. I used to talk to him down at Starbucks. Spider? He had been clean for, or we thought he had been clean for like a year or so, and he relapsed. Yeah. He's a really sweet kid. He was really sad about Griffin's passing. And this is also very fresh. I, I want to say less than a week, probably. Mm-hmm. The word still isn't even out, I don't think. I can't get him to come in, but okay. I know he's here. Okay. Hi, Alex. You're a sweet boy. I hope you're doing okay. So your mama sent your roommate to check on you, huh? Did he check on you or not? What happened, kiddo? Oh, uh, it was too late. Okay. Marshawn or Rana. <laughs> He's just rhyming your name for some reason. I love you. You're going to be okay, I promise. Anything I can tell your mama? Griff is just talking to him about, you know, where he is and what's going on. I think Spider knows where he is, but I, I think he's so over overwhelmed of hearing everybody's thoughts. Spider, will you give you an open invitation to come back? And you let Griffin know when you're ready. I love you. I know you just got there. And it's all overwhelming, as I'm sure. But I'm going to tell your mom you love her. How about that? Yes. 
and it was too okay. late when the roommate found you. So there's no suspicious activity left behind? No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nobody's insinuated that. I'm just asking because moms go through the whole rigmarole. So I'll put her at peace if I can. Um, that takes time. Okay. Hallie. Hallie, Dylan's girlfriend. She's looked at South Carolina and she's looked at Colorado for colleges. She seems to be swinging towards South Carolina, which is, I think, upsetting the apple cart around here with Dylan, because she's implying, she's not, she comes back today, but she implied that the partying is good for the Greek life, like the sorority or whatever women join, fraternity sorority, I don't even know. And what is that all about? Where is she going to end up? South Carolina, what she's swinging towards, I guess, on the phone after seeing it, or Colorado? She gets accepted to both. Okay. Um, if she is trying to look out for just herself, she'll lean with South Carolina. If she sides with more of the environmental or humanitarian efforts, she'll hit Denver. Okay. So right now in her fear of being on her own and figuring out who the hell she's going to be when she grows up, South Carolina fits it. Okay. Got ya. So it's still kind of up in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay.